So let me introduce the next uh, the next talk. So Stefano will join us. Stefano is coming from the European Commission, and he will talk about uh, the European data strategy, the carbon neutrality objective, <coughs> and, and the Green Deal. So I think it will be a a, a, a good talk about uh, what is moving in Europe and not only in France. So Stefano, can you join us? Ah, I don't see Stefano in the in my screen. Hello? Hi, Hi Stefano. Okay, now I can I can hear you. I couldn't hear you. <laughs> okay, so no, I hear you, I see you, and uh, yeah, yeah. I just introduced your talk. So if you want to uh, to share some slide, you please feel free. Yeah, let me share my screen, uh, your entire screen. Hmm. Okay. Okay. So now I can share uh, my PowerPoint. Okay, great. Can you see? I see it. Maybe you can put it in full screen. Okay, that's perfect. So I will hide my camera in my, uh, my microphone, but I'm still there. Thank you. Thank you very much. So <clears throat> I'm Stefano Nativi and I work for the European Commission. Uh, the Joint Research Center at ISPRA. I am the big data lead scientist. Uh, and uh, today, my co authors are Alex Kotsev, Monica Posada, and uh, Lorenzino Vaccari. They all work with the Joint Research Center. The, and uh, I'm going to uh, uh, cover uh, 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 this topic today. I mean, how to reconcile the European data strategy with another important strategy from Europe, from the European Union, which is called the carbon neutrality uh, uh, objectives uh, as uh, stated by the Green Deal. And uh, these are the two main pillars here. You know, I mentioned these two strategies recently developed and launched by the European Union. First one is the data strategy, so to, to to come up with um, some policy. So basically it means, uh, you know, uh, uh, support, uh, so fundings uh, and uh, regulation uh, on data governance, because uh, we are living, uh, as uh, you know very well, uh, in a data economy. And uh, as you can see at the bottom uh, on the left side, uh, there are quite uh, important numbers. Uh, in terms uh, of uh, uh, increasing uh, volume uh, of the data. Uh, 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 today we are, I mean, basically uh, uh, generating something like 40 zettabytes of data and the uh, increase here was uh, about, uh, I mean, more than 500% uh, since uh, 2018. And clearly this trend uh, is going to stay here or even to accelerate due, due, due to the pandemic uh, crisis. And then, uh, of course, uh, uh, we are living in, a, in an economy which uh, is largely based and uh, more and more will be on, uh, on digitalization. Uh, and the same, of course, uh, is for jobs uh, and for our companies and uh, startups. So we need to manage uh, uh, data uh, uh, from all the different aspects but in doing that uh, we have also to combine and uh, utilize this uh, management uh, strategy with another important pillar of our future which is uh, the carbon neutrality as uh, as aimed by the european green deal strategy by the uh, 2050. Uh, uh, Europe uh, aims to become uh, the first continent, uh, the first region uh, with uh, zero emission, you know. So uh, uh, this is uh, particularly important uh, for uh, all of us and for the entire planet. And uh, another uh, topic that I'm going to cover today, of course, quickly, 
uh, it is uh, this nexus. I mean, when, uh, when we talk about innovative technologies and uh, we talk about data uh, uh, largely, we also include, of course, uh, uh, we include computing, for example, uh, um, high performance or high throughput uh, uh, computing in order to use uh, artificial intelligence, learning-based artificial intelligence, mainly to, you know, uh, to process uh, this data and generate actionable uh, intelligence. Well, uh, uh, these are so two important uh, areas, but let me also int introduce uh, another uh, key, uh, uh, you know, uh, area here, which is energy. Because clearly, if we want to combine the data strategy with the green data strategy, we have to develop and we have to talk more and more about a nexus. And this, ne and this nexus is about computing data and energy. And uh, uh, this is one of the three recognized factors in order to uh, you know, move on uh, with uh, artificial intelligence uh, and move on with uh, a smart uh, society. The other two uh, important factors are cybersecurity and ethics. And uh, of course, the European Commission and the European Union is, uh, is much active also uh, on the other two, but I will uh, largely cover the energy factor today. So, I mean, uh, uh, this slide, uh, it is to say that, uh, uh, indeed, uh, uh, another challenge here is that uh, we have also to understand that data growth is largely outpacing uh, the, for the foreseeable uh, improvement in the computational power. Why? I mean, because uh, the Moore law is, uh, I mean, doesn't seem to be uh, uh, so valid uh, uh, today uh, due to limiting factors of our CPUs and energy, uh, energy consumption indeed is one uh, of these factors. And uh, another important challenge, but I mean, when I say challenge, we have always to understand a challenge also as a great opportunity for uh, uh, for all of us, I mean, for citizens, for industry, and for the entire uh, society, you know, in order to develop uh, new solutions uh, and new attitudes. So another challenges and opportunity here is coming from the, the new generation, the second generation of Internet of Things, because while uh, the first generation uh, uh, was capable of uh, connecting billions of uh, things to the internet, uh, the second uh, generation uh, promises to make uh, uh, these uh, things intelligent and to make uh, you know, these things useful uh, for uh, achieving uh, uh, actionable intelligence and making uh, our uh, society smart or smarter. And uh, that's the process uh, on the right side, uh, you can see, uh, we start, uh, of course, uh, collecting uh, data, observing uh, and generating data. And then, uh, of course, I mean, using uh, uh, high capacity uh, uh, bandwidth, uh, you know, co communication networks to move these uh, data into uh, uh, analytical centers where uh, artificial intelligence uh, uh, allows us to generate actionable intelligence and then to act back on the observed phenomena, processes, and products. So this is a, a virtual, uh, you know, a process, a virtual uh, cycle. But of course, uh, we have to, uh, you know, have in mind that this must be done uh, as efficient as possible in terms of environmental impact. And uh, this process is also a key process uh, in order to understand how our society is rapidly moving towards a, a, a cyber physical you know reality and this is good of course in terms of uh, uh, energy consumption and in terms of pollution 
because uh, you know several of the physical uh, transaction and physical uh, you know uh, uh, businesses are move uh, into the virtual world so that uh, they can be managed and optimized by reducing energy and the footprint but on the other side we have to understand what uh, these uh, ICT you know uh, uh, instruments and the processes mean in terms of energy consumption and uh, footprint and uh, for uh, example uh, you know a, a, a quite uh, important uh, challenge is coming from data management because uh, these processes uh, are all uh, you know generating uh, a huge amount of data and then data of course must be processed so also a huge demand for computing power so for uh, example uh, uh, this data uh, uh, come from uh, ibm here we have 40 zettabyte of data and uh, in average that means that each person generates something like 1.7 megabyte per second uh, we have 14 billion of mobile device uh, against 31 billion of iot devices connected to the internet and uh, every second uh, 127 are added and more than 5,000 artificial intelligence companies, 200 million active virtual reality users and so on. So this is good because clearly this is a clear sign that our society is embracing, is fully embracing this digital transformation, becoming more and more virtual. But on the other side, we have to manage uh, the energy consumption and the uh, environmental efficiency of the ict sector and uh, here are few numbers in order to tell you uh, what uh, we can and uh, we should uh, uh, we should do uh, uh, for example uh, today uh, the ict sector footprint uh, is about uh, 200 percent according to other sources it reaches 3%, but anyway, I mean, it is not uh, a, a, a question of number, but certainly is uh, an important number in terms of global CO2 emissions, and uh, it is equal uh, uh, to the aviation sector uh, globally. And according to some uh, uh, sources and some studies, uh, it is uh, going to reach the uh, uh, car emission uh, uh, contribution by 2025 or 2030. So uh, 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 in, uh, in the ICT sector, data centers uh, are uh, the fastest growing carbon footprint. And so we have uh, definitely to, you know, uh, work on data, on data centers and also on the communication systems uh, uh, related to data centers, and I'll cover this in uh, my next slides. And uh, in terms of energy consumption, uh, uh, the ICT sector as a whole uh, consumes approximately 7% 7, 7 of, the of the global uh, electricity. So you can understand it is, uh, you know, it is like a, a small and some medium countries uh, consumption here. And, uh, and this share, uh, uh, according to several uh, projections, uh, will rise up to 13% by 2030. And uh, once more, uh, I mean, uh, data centers uh, are, uh, you know, are important sources uh, uh, here, uh, uh, about 1.4%, uh, and the growth rate uh, is 4.4. Uh, is, uh, uh, and then, of course, uh, it is not only you know hardware and uh, and infrastructure system. It is also about uh, software and applications. And uh, as we can expect, of course, uh, real time video streaming, online gaming, you know, are uh, the most uh, you know the most important uh, uh, application in terms of uh, uh, data generation and therefore 
energy and uh, and uh, uh, CO2 footprint. And uh, today they already account for 60% of all the data traffic. And it is expected that this number will, uh, will rise to 80% by the end of 2020, so of this year. And uh, uh, this is, uh, this is, uh, uh, these are some of the considerations uh, present in uh, this uh, European uh, Commission study, the 2020 Strategic Foresight uh, Report, uh, charting the course uh, towards a more uh, resilient Europe. Well, uh, uh, artificial intelligence in particular is uh, promising a lot of improvements in terms of energy efficiency and uh, I'm sure that uh, if this, uh, I mean it is a, a quite important instrument in order to reach our green deal strategy but on the other side we have also to work in order to make it more efficient for instance artificial intelligence training is definitely uh, 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 impacting in terms of the footprint a lot, as uh, you can see. And as far as energy, I mean, uh, for example, here in uh, AWS zone, infrastructure consumes uh, uh, in average between uh, 100 and 160 megawatt power. And uh, we have around 70 of these, uh, of these zone and 13 are planned. So, uh, uh, I mean, uh, Clearly, we have to make uh, this important infrastructure, uh, you know, uh, uh, less consuming in terms of energy and therefore less important in terms of uh, footprint. Unfortunately, uh, COVID uh, uh, is accelerating this process, which is good from one side because uh, more and more uh, users and society activities move on the web but on the other side of course uh, we accelerated this data generation and data movement on the internet if you can see on the right side here there is the percentage variation uh, uh, of the growth of uh, request per second in the different application sectors on internet due to the first wave of the of the covid and we have impressive numbers in terms of acceleration here for news and digital publishing we have seven, I mean, more than 700 percent you know of of the grow in really a, a short time i mean we are talking about weeks or one month and the same is for educational technology and 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 so on so basically in one month, uh, we saw the entire growth plan for one year. Um, what about possible, uh, you know, possible uh, 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 solutions here? Well, of course, there are many. Here I just try to uh, provide you with uh, three possible lines. The first one is to uh, uh, reduce the energy consumption uh, of processing units, uh, uh, chips, uh, you know, servers uh, and, uh, and uh, software. For example, uh, for the chips, uh, uh, the, the, the classic uh, uh, von Neumann architecture was not designed for data intensive uh, computing. So definitely new, you know, uh, architecture uh, uh, has been uh, you know developed and uh, hopefully will come more and more uh, you know and uh, for example in memory computing but there are others possible uh, solution as far as software optimization uh, here apis could certainly help and please consider that when we talk about uh, optimization uh, of energy consumption we are not just thinking of power consumption but also usage, usage, usage time. For example, you know, with chips, you know, there are several strategies in order to 
reduce uh, uh, the consumption uh, due to the usage time when you are uh, you know uh, you are doing your computation then uh, another important line here is to reduce the data movement because uh, every time you move uh, a single byte uh, you are uh, consuming energy and uh, here uh, you know uh, um, the uh, the line is to develop intelligence or more intelligence architecture edge fog you know computing but also once more to you know uh, optimize the power consumption versus the usage time and finally to ensure more uh, sustainable life cycle process for the entire ICT products and services and uh, the previous, uh, you know, the previous presentation, the previous uh, uh, speech uh, uh, was enlightening here about uh, at least what, what we can do in the usage, uh, you know, uh, uh, part of this uh, process. Um, as I said, uh, Europe, uh, the European uh, Union launched these uh, two important uh, strategies and they must go together. They are called the twins because they must stay together because, uh, uh, as this other slide says, it is unthinkable uh, uh, to conceive uh, 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 the Green Deal strategy achieved without uh, a fully digital transformation of our uh, of our uh, society and uh, it is also your you know it, it is also needed uh, to embed in the ict development uh, in this uh, digitalization of the concept of carbon neutrality so the concept of energy and environmental efficiency stefano well, yeah sorry to Time is running, so just to inform you that we have three minutes to maybe conclude the presentation and and uh, spend some time yeah, on, on the question. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, I mean, uh, just very quickly, uh, what the uh, European Union has done uh, uh, as of 2008 was to push uh, best practices. For example, this is uh, the EU Code of Conduct on Data centers which was extremely successful uh, i mean i i don't have time but you can look at these uh, you know uh, uh, indicators uh, and uh, in on a voluntary basis uh, companies apply this code of, of content data center companies and they improve their energy efficiency and now we are working uh, in order to contribute to standardization uh, doing similar things in particular this is uh, the ITU focus group on environmental efficiency for artificial intelligence and other emerging technologies. And we are working on a specific technical report dealing with AI and uh, innovative uh, technologies. So uh, uh, just uh, my two slides, uh, uh, there are several opportunities. In particular for Europe to take the lead in uh, supporting the transition to a less energy intensive artificial intelligence sector to work on introducing and facilitating certification scheme for green ict components infrastructure and practices consider inbuilt that means by design constraint to power data infrastructure within a carbon free energy scenario reduce energy consumption of processing unit service and associated infrastructure minimize the energy required for moving data without compromising, of course, the quality of services, and uh, to foster cross-sector and multi-stakeholder relationships in order to leverage on data-driven innovation and support the transition to a low-carbon economy. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Stefano. So we have, we have a few questions, and, and uh, the first one was, uh, you, you show some uh, footprint, carbon footprint, um, focusing also on uh, an uh, intelligence artificial, artificial intelligence, sorry for that. Uh, so do you have other sector footprint to have a kind of perspective and compare uh, IT and other uh, footprint? 
Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, we have, uh, we have. Uh, I didn't, uh, I didn't, uh, I didn't show them. Uh, but clearly, uh, you know, as uh, I said, uh, there is uh, this double effect. You know, in terms uh, of uh, uh, artificial intelligence or uh, 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 um, digital uh, society, uh, the appliance of uh, such a smart. Uh, you know, a process uh, promised to, you know, reduce the consumption of uh, many of the other sectors. I mean, I could say, I mean, I, I could have mentioned, for instance, you know, cities, you know, buildings, you know, the so-called smart cities or smart buildings uh, by applying uh, these ICT instruments and in particular artificial intelligence. The same, uh, the same, of course, is for the transport, you know, sectors and even in the production. I mean, if we take the the production, uh, you know, uh, 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 process for ICT system as well as other goods, of course, I mean, industry 4.0 and industry 5.0 promises to real reduce, uh, you know, a lot. Uh, I mean, hopefully, the energy consumption and therefore also the CO2. I mean, I talk about energy, but clearly, I mean, water consumption is also another uh, another important change. So. To be smart or to be smarter indeed will affect positively all the other sectors. As far as ICT, I mean, because, you know, in, in the life uh, there is always a price, you know, to pay. So how can, can we be smarter? And uh, this is the nexus that I, you know, introduce. You have to generate more data and then mm -hmm. you have to process uh, this data in order to extract intelligence. So we have to you know definitely accelerate in order to be smart intelligence and then we have to manage how to deal with uh, this staggering amount of data and processing needs thank you stefano so thank you so much for your uh, time and your presentation and um, i will move to the next uh, presentation so uh, 